I'm not sure whether I want throwing up to this on camera. <laughs> Out, went to Newcastle to do my degree um, and then I went over to America and um, the University of Austin at Tex at te in Texas another one <laughs> I was very lucky because the post I had the postdoc I was doing there was very well funded so I had a lot of money to go traveling my main traveling was more when I was younger I went to Israel and lived on a kibbutz uh, which was a fantastic experience a bit um, eye-opening to begin with, you know, a sort of young, innocent 18-year-old girl. All the women were assigned to laundry duties and cooking. And I was like, I think that was my first bit of, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I persuaded the volunteer leader to let me go out with all the guys, um, cutting the banana, the leaves off the banana trees or cutting the bananas down. Um, and uh, it was hard work trying to keep up with the guys, but I managed it. <laughs> I went to um, Egypt with a group of friends and we travelled all around, e backpacked around Egypt. I remember you could get a hotel room for about £2 a night. You didn't, you didn't actually get a room, sorry, you were actually sleeping on the roof. But it was hot, so it was fine. And, and in that price you also got an omelette for breakfast. So <laughs> it's really good. I, I really love classical music and I'd like to say, oh yes, I go to the opera all the time. I'm very cultured. <laughs> um, my partner surprised me with tickets um, last month and we went to see Tosca, so that was fantastic. I'd never been to the Royal Opera House before. It's all sort of juggling it with family life and, and work and so on. So I do really like music. Where do my preferences lie with music? I'm not sure whether I want to own up to this on camera. <laughs> Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a massive George Michael fan, um, I have to own up to even being in his fan club, although I think I might have um, lapsed my membership recently, but um, <laughs> he doesn't do uh, many gigs very often, but he, he did a few years ago and I managed to get tickets at Wembley Stadium, you know, where's the other one, Wembley Arena, um, he played at the Royal Albert Hall, you know, and I was right at the front because I was in the fan club, I was on the front row, so I don't know if I should admit to all that, but anyway, most people know. Um, so I love George Michael. Um, I'm a little bit stuck in the 80s, so I do like my 80s music as well. Um, well, my older daughter's, you know, in the real teenage phase, so I do like some of her music, actually. Um, but and actually, it's quite funny, because every now and then she'll say, have you got any of so-and-so music? Um, I'm just trying to think of one. Um, Oasis, um, The Smiths, you know, she'll say, oh yeah, I'll say, oh yes, I've got that. Really? I didn't know you were that cool. You used to be cool when you were younger. Like, you know, what's happened to me now? <laughs> um, and then my younger daughter, you know, is kind of just getting in, into music at the moment. So it's been one direction, but it's now, um, well, I can't remember his name. He's got ginger hair, Ed Sheeran, that's it. Yeah. So I did originally think I'd say three different George Michael albums, but I decided if they were the only three I'd ever have, I'd probably get a bit fed up. So I decided Super Tramp would be my second one. And I would probably choose their live in Paris because that's got a varied of their different songs, you know, from all different albums, and it's really fun because they're all happy at a concert in Paris. And then I, I think I'd have to have a classical one just because the mood takes me every now and then. You know, a big interest of mine in science is science um, where there's an actual application. And then since I've been here, nearly all my research funding's been. Um, where we're tr trying to develop new routes to functional materials. I just find it really exciting that one day, you never know, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'll never have anything named after me, but one day something that we've developed in our lab here, you know, might go through some scale-up process and then could actually have some, you know, real-world application out there. Thinking about women in science in general and why there is that, because what you often find is that there's a 50-50 ratio often even ratio at undergraduate level, sometimes through to PhD level. But then there's quite a rapid drop off as you go to postdoc and then beyond. Some fields um, that you look at, you know, in science, it's been very male dominated. So, you know, the likelihood of having a female professor is, is you know, very slight. And, but on the other hand, I think it's important that women are recognised for their talents as well. You know, women don't want to just get the job because oh, we need a few more women in, on the staff. You do want to get that job because you're the best person for it. I, I don't know, I just, I, I think I'm relaxed. I don't, um, I don't have any airs and graces. What you see is what you get. Um, I don't use um, 
big words like a lot of academics as well. Wow. Um, and I'm just a normal person, I think. <laughs> Which you can't say for all academics, can you? But then perhaps not keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hundred percent. My name is Claire Carmalt and I'm a professor in inorganic chemistry here in the chemistry department at UCL. I'm also head of the inorganic and materials section in chemistry and I'm vice dean education for the mathematical and physical sciences faculty here at the university. Wow!